It helps to develop a sense of community. It is part of our shared experience. For a moment, we can forget about anything else that's happening in the world and just enjoy somebody's lights on their home, driving around neighborhoods. You see a kid sort of light up or, or get enchanted with something. We really see city-driven, community-driven activity of, of Christmas lights being something that Denverites did. He has that kind of folksy character who would love his son so much that he would do anything to make him happy. Denver is known from the very beginning to be the city of lights. Are we ready? All right, let's get this party started. Join me in counting down. Uh-oh, someone's missing. I, I need a young person to join me. We are missing. Come on up here with your lights. So we don't really know who invented the Christmas lights. Light bulbs started happening um, almost as art objects. Some of the earliest light bulbs were meant to be decorations because they were so expensive and so special that just to look at a light bulb lit up was, uh, was a special thing. Thomas Edison was playing around with electric Christmas lights in the 1880s as he was starting to experiment with electricity. And of course, Christmas lights as candles date far back as uh, Christmas celebrations into the 1600s. There are lots of claims to the birthplace of Christmas lights and who invented colored lights and who dip bulbs first in paint and all of that sort of thing. But it, it all happened around the same time. So it's all in that 1890s to 1920s. You're gonna see stuff that was happening over in Europe and in Germany at the same time that we're coming up with stuff in America. I think a lot of it is what they call 100th monkey, which means that if you put 100 monkeys in one place, there'll be two monkeys doing the same exact thing at any one time, and they both think that they're the only one. Although the stories are charming, every community should embrace their their lore. We know that the first outdoor Christmas lights really got hold here in Colorado, in Denver. We have a history of, of really loving our electricity and loving our electrical lights and lighting up the city to be quite the place to spend Christmas. There were very few women reporters and Pinky Wayne was one of them. She was an extraordinary woman. She was called the uncrowned queen of reporters. She promoted the story of David Dwight Sturgeon. Christmas lights were invented in Colorado in 1914 by D.D. Sturgeon, who was an electrician here in Colorado. And he did so because his son was uh, ill, bedridden, and unable to go downstairs. And so Sturgeon went out and he collected some light bulbs and he strung them together and dipped them in red and green paint and strung them around a pine tree outside of the window of his son's bedroom. People were very excited by seeing these lights. His neighbors saw it and they thought it was a great idea and they began to emulate him. Pinky Wayne referred to David Dwight Sturgeon as the father of your light. Those people who did have electricity, of course, they had to go out and find someone who could create this for them. Christmas lights were not something you could just buy in a box at the time. You had to have an electrician actually build you a set of Christmas lights. The impact of those Christmas lights took a little bit of time. People were still slowly electrifying their homes, but where it did have a larger impact was on the city of Denver itself. In 1919, Civic Center Park opens for the first time. It's a brand new park in the city of Denver, and John Malpede, who worked for the city, said, I want to put lights into this park. So he began decorating the evergreens in Civic Center. And he went out and he started changing out the light bulbs in the street lamps that surrounded the park into red and green bulbs. 1920, the Denver Post starts their contest. It was the Denver Post Electrical League. With each passing year, they added more and more decorations. We know that residents were competing in this competition. We know that the city, particularly at Civic Center Park, just kept getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And by 1926, John Melpede had convinced the mayor of Denver to start putting more money into Christmas lighting. That was before the city and county of Denver building was built. In 1932, the building is done. By 1936, the city and county of Denver make Christmas outdoor lighting an official act 
of the city and county of Denver. It was an all out effort by city employees to put those Christmas lights up. The Denver fire department companies would come with their ladder trucks to get Christmas lights higher and higher in the park and then on the buildings themselves. We absolutely cannot talk about Christmas lighting without talking about the National Western tradition. The National Western Stock Show has been held every year for more than 120 years here in Denver. During the 1940s, the city of Denver and the National Western encouraged people to leave their lights on until the end of the stock show, both as a way to make the city seem more celebratory for those who were coming from really remote rural areas and maybe had never seen that kind of Christmas lighting before, and also a way to kind of help the holiday just last a little bit longer and for those people to feel welcome when they came to the city. When I was growing up, it was the department stores that sort of held the reign on all the Christmas decorations because they could afford the electricity and to do the very elaborate displays. It's not until LED lighting really comes into its own that people could really afford to even wrap the trees and decorate the way that we decorate now. Christmas lights are one of the most stable things we see in our Christmas traditions. Lighted Christmas trees has become a custom around the nation and around the world. People have embraced this idea because it lightens up, if you will, a gloomy winter's night. And I think in some ways, here we are more than 100 years later, and we're really enjoying Christmas lighting for the same reason that David Sturgeon enjoyed his Christmas lighting as a four-year-old in 1914, and that is that they bring joy to us. The reason that we do Christmas lights is to light up the dark. It's a dark and cold time of year. It's the shortest day, the longest night. For over 5,000 years at least, we've been celebrating with light. So I think that humans have always had the need to light that fire and to stay warm together and to celebrate the harvest. Sturgeon put those lights up so his family could feel together, even if David couldn't come downstairs. And I think Mal Pede did the same thing in putting all those lights up. Uh, I was raised in New York City, in the Lower East Side, in the tenements. And I want you to know, that can be a pretty gloomy place. The winter and the lights, yeah, uh, really did uh, come as a sense of relief. And it gave me a sense of the fact that there was a larger world out there beyond the tenements of the Lower East Side. It made me believe in the possibility of other things. Knowing that uh, this was uh, something that was uh, shared by other people elsewhere gave me a sense of feeling that, yeah, I'm part of a, a larger community. Pinky Wayne said that Denver had been declared the Christmas capital of the world. Denver is considered to be uh, the site, if you will, of, of Christmas lights in the world. Denver truly is the city of lights. How often can you lay claim to having created a custom that has uh, been embraced by people all around the world? The tradition of Christmas lighting still continues today in Denver. We are one of the brightest cities uh, at Christmas time. Five, four, three, two, one, switch it! Yeah.